Hi, it's Andrew, and welcome to episode one of the Neon Knitter podcast. So, this podcast serves the purpose of sharing what I've gotten up to in the past month. And, yeah. So, I'm going to try to film each episode around the first of the month. So, that is my goal. So how it's going to work is I'm going to do finished objects, whips, and acquisitions. Okay. And then, yeah. So and then, yeah, so that is what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna start with the big elephant in the room here, what I'm wearing. This is my most recent FO. This is the Eyeball Shawl by Stephen West, which, you know, I can only hold it up so much because I filmed this podcast sitting on the landing of the stairs. So, or at least this particular episode. We'll see if I continue sitting here or not. I think this might be my best background but anyways so I'm gonna try my best to hold it up for you guys but it's the eyeball shawl so and here's the shirt I'm wearing it with if you're wondering um but yeah so a little bit about the yarns I used um, I gotta make sure I'm holding it from the top. Okay. Color A, this is in the very middle here, and I didn't grab my yarn labels, they're still upstairs. Um, and yeah, so. But I used for color A, which is in the very middle here, and then on the brioche, I used, um, oh, I'm blanking on the name of it. Um, Brown Sheep Wildfoot Luxury Sock. Yeah, Brown Sheep Wildfoot Sock in the color um, Bluegrass. And then color B is Zitron Wolkenspiel in the color Silver Hair. And then color C is Madeline Tosh Twist Light in the colorway Salt. And yep, here's the brioche. Um, I really love this piece. I haven't worn it out yet. I plan on wearing it on Monday, so, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and today is October 1st, and I just finished filming my Mr. Knit Along intro, and I had a quick outfit change, so, yeah. Um, normally I won't be filming more than one video in a day, but... Mr. Knit Along is kind of a big deal, so when I show you all my acquisitions, I will refer you to my Mr. Knit Along video if you want to see my MCAL yarns, because that's the only acquisition I won't show off in this video. But yeah, so that's my eyeball shawl. Um, I bought the colors A. So I, oh, and also Stephen West sells on his website these saw on tags at stephenandpenelope.com. Westmans are the best knits. So I buy them and sell them on all my shawls, except for the M cows, which I get the M cow specific one. Um, and I do have the tag for the 2020 M cow, and I justified that one for Slipstravaganza. I justified it because it was still a mystery when I picked the yarns. I still haven't cast it on. I didn't buy the yarns till after it was revealed, but I nailed my color palette. Absolutely nailed it. It's good, and I think it'll look nice. So, see, I literally have tags for everything. Um, so yeah, but anyways, that's my eyeball shawl, and I bought the yarns at, well, I bought the yarns at three different places, kind of two, but kind of three, so <clears throat> this is all based off of color B, the Zitron Wolkenspiel. Um, and 
I was at in 2021 a fiber fair in St. Cloud, Minnesota. If you're wondering, I live in St. Paul, Minnesota. So, yeah. Um, so I was at a fiber fair up in St. Cloud, which is maybe an hour from here. Um, so it's not like you would go to St. Cloud daily, but once a year for a fiber fair, yeah. And it is at this place called Rocky Horse Farm. I don't really know how much animals they have anymore, but they have a year-round yarn shop there. And then the first Saturday in June, they have a fiber fair with the vendors. And you can also shop their yarn shop that they have year-round. Um, but all the yarn I bought for this project, I actually got in their actual shop, not from any of the vendors. Um, and I cast this on so that I could be knitting it at the festival this year, so that I could say, hey, look what I'm making with yarn I bought last year. So, so yeah, that's a thing. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so, um, and then I set it down all summer, which I'll get into in a minute. Another FO I have, which is why I set this down all summer and then just picked it up recently. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. So the reason I picked this up recently, which is a good segue into why I just coughed, I recently was out sick with bronchitis. Otherwise, I had hoped to get my first episode out about a month ago, but a couple weeks ago, I had bronchitis, and it's that cough that absolutely won't quit. You know, like when you're back going places again, you're still coughing. It's horrifically ridiculous, and I just want the cough to end. Um, but anyways, so <clears throat> I was adamantly working on one of my whips, which I'll show you in a little bit, my um, color craving. And then when I was sick, I was like, you know what, color craving has way too much counting for what I want to do right now because I don't have the brain space for counting. Whenever I'm awake while I'm sick, I'm going to get out my eyeball shawl because I was on the second half of the white part. And that's just plain garter stitch except for your increases. So... Yeah, that went pretty well, and then I was healthy by the time I got to my brioche. I was going back places. It was literally like the weekend after I started going back to work that I started the brioche. Um, so yeah, and I could not be happier with this. And it's really funky that it's the eyeball, so yeah. Um, So yeah, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to wear this in the Mystery Knit Along wrap-up video or not. Because I might do a sort of a wrap-up on October 31st. I don't know. And then I might do a, another video later when I actually finish this all. I haven't decided yet, but that's Halloween and I want to wear an eyeball <laughs> on Halloween, you know. So I'm glad to get this done in time to wear it on Halloween. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So the reason I set this down all summer, which this is a good segue into my next finished object, this is my Rockefeller. Um, I have all the yarns in it, all the past mystery knit alongs, and so I'm really looking forward to getting into that, and yeah. So yeah, Rockefeller, um, I love how this turned out. Um, I was obsessively knitting on this all summer because I had a day plan to get together with a friend of mine who happens to have the same exact shirt that I wear this with. And so I bought the shirt because it was really hard to find a shirt to go with this. I walked into Walmart and was like, there it is. And he texted me and was like, what do you do today? And I texted him a picture of, oh, I bought this shirt today. He's like, I have the same shirt. So. All summer I was knitting the shawl so that when we got together we could wear the same shirt. But if you know anything about me, I don't go anywhere without wearing my knitwear. So, yeah, I feel very not put together if I'm not wearing my knitwear. And when I was on vacation in Arizona, we mostly were in the cooler part of Arizona, not the warm, hot desert. The only reason we were in Phoenix was because that's where we flew in and out of. Um, 
so yeah, I had a sweater on that day. I was wearing one of my sweaters that I made in 100 degree Phoenix, mostly because we were flying back to the Twin Cities and I wanted to not be freezing because it was spring, it was April. But yeah, so yeah, that is, that is so beautiful. Um, so color A is the gray. It's kind of a bluish gray. It is Freya fingering shawl ball in the colorway blue patina. And then the green, which is color B, is Ching Fiber Dashing Sassy in the colorway cucumber. So yeah, I, you guys, it, 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 it's so good. Um, and I was, I think I was actually gonna wear this on the podcast episode, but I couldn't find my shirt. So I took my eyeball shawl on, which this is my most recent FO anyways, so. Um, so that is my Rockefeller. Finished that a few weeks ago. Finished it at the end of August. Um, my other FOs I'm gonna show you are things that I finished since I last posted a video, and I finished other things too, I think, but I'm not gonna show you everything that I finished because that would be like a really long video. This I quickly knit in the month of June so that I could wear it on Independence Day because it's blue and red. This is a Kimbo by Stephen West. Um, and I bought a red, white, and blue shirt at Walmart same day I got the shirt for Rockefeller. Um, and I was like, ooh, I need to make something for Independence Day. So it wasn't blocked on Independence Day because I actually finished it the night before. And I looked horrific in it because it looked absolutely horrific before I blocked it. It was just so scrunched up and ridiculous. But I wore it because it's Independence Day. But I never wore it again until I blocked it. And now that it's blocked, I do wear it. Um, but yeah, the main color is the blue. And this is Madeline Tosh Tosh Merino Light in the colorway Lapis. And that's a discontinued color. Steve and me just happen to have a really old skein of it. So... And then the contrast color is B Sweet Skinny Wool in the colorway red. And then again, West Knits tag, which I also have on my Rockefeller here. So, yeah, I like this. It didn't take very long to make. So that's the thing is if you really want to knit a Stephen West pattern, but you don't have a whole heck of a lot of time I would say either do a Kimbo or the Slip Rib Scarf. Those ones go pretty quickly. So, but yeah, a Kimbo, very quick knit. Um, yeah. Then my next finished object is Bent Grass, also by Stephen West. I haven't figured out how to sew on a tag to this yet, but I'll sew one on at some point. I don't know anything about this yarn. It, I got this yarn at a thrift store. If you're wondering specifically what store, St. Vincent's in St. Paul. Um, St. Vincent de Paul thrift store. A nice store, um, but all I know is this yarn is probably 100% wool. Um, it happened to be in a Three Kittens Needle Arts bag, which if you're wondering, Three Kittens Needle Arts is one of my local yarn shops. It's in Mendota Heights, Minnesota. Um, not the closest store to me, but I've been there twice. Yeah. So, it was in a Three Kittens bag, but I bought it at a thrift store. So, I just was craving a cast on one day, and this takes a few hours to make. There's two versions. There's a cowl, and then there's a scarf. The scarf calls for worsely weight yarn, and it's two repeats wide of the lace pattern, and it's really long. But then the cowl calls for a super bulky or a number six weight yarn and yeah it takes like a couple hours to make so I did this all in an afternoon and then I went to Stephen B and bought my buttons and because yeah you put buttonholes on the scarf doesn't have buttonholes there's a different way of finishing that one I'm thinking of maybe sewing the tag like in between the buttons here so like when I button it up you won't see the tag but I just because it's a Stephen West design obsessively want to put a tag on it <laughs> I don't know why but 
that is my bent grass cowl. Um, and I think these buttons look really good on it. So yeah, I don't know anything about the yarn because I got it at a thrift store and there was no label with it. So yeah. Lastly, the other finished object I'm going to show you is my painting honeycomb shawl. Again, so to tag on. Um, but yeah, this is the large version of the gradient yarn. And you guys, it looks like watermelon. <laughs> and I have three watermelon, actually four watermelon shirts. I have four watermelon shirts, so this shawl actually has four shirts that go with it. But it looks like watermelon. <laughs> Tell me that isn't awesome. So, yeah. <clears throat> I bought this yarn at um, D. Marie Knit and Fiber in Prairie du Sac, Wisconsin. Which, um, yeah, so I bought it at uh, D. Marie Knit and Fiber in Prairie du Sac, Wisconsin. Um, and it's a very nice yarn. Anyways, um, so yeah, um, this yarn is discontinued. It's from a company that went out of business, Brew City Yarns. Sadly, she, in July of 2020, lost her life to COVID. The owner of Brew City, I don't remember her name, but knowing that, this was extra special to me. And also watermelon's my favorite food, so. <coughs> um, and so the black is also from Brew City, which if Brew City was still in business, I might have just gotten a different skein of black because it was kind of an expensive skein. It's also a 600 yard skein of black. Um, so yeah, but um, I wanted to have the same dyer just knowing that she was passed away and that she was out of business. Um, but I had been at Dee Marie about a couple years before and had seen the watermelon gradient yarn, which by the way, if you're wondering, it was a sock blank. Um, and then the black was a regular skein, but I had seen it and I was pretty sure they wouldn't still have it, but if they did, I was immediately going to buy it. They had still like four in stock. <laughs> they have since sold out, but... Um, so Dee Marie was owned by Dana Marie, of course, hence the name Dee Marie. She sold her yarn shop to another person, I forget her name, and because she retired, and so Dee Marie then moved to the next town over, Sauk City, and they were in, and they have a nice new space. And, I mean, I kind of miss their old space, but I like their new space. And then they renamed Flax and Fleece. So if you hear me talk about Flax and Fleece, and then you hear me talk about Dee Marina and Fiber, it's more or less the same store. They just moved to the next town. They're still on the same road, but they just moved one town over and renamed the store because Dana Marie no longer owns Dee Marie Knit and Fiber. So, you know. Um... So yeah, um, so the black yarn is the Brew City um, Premium Draft Sock. It's a two-ply sock, or high twist. And um, the color is called Niffler Blackest. And again, like I said, I had an XL skein, so 600 yards instead of 400. But anyways, if they didn't have black from Bruce City, I would have just gotten black from another company. But the reason I chose black is because the red part of the yarn does not have black speckles like watermelon seeds. So, and then I had to get two of the watermelon sock blanks and I had to, every two rows, I would switch between them. You know, kind of like when you alternate skeins with hand dyed yarns, which I don't generally tend to do. But here's what Steven said to do in the pattern, because he used Bill and Wally, which is a gradient cake of yarn that he sells in his shop in Amsterdam. <laughs> uh, 
what he does or what he did is <clears throat> he started with the cake either in the middle or the outside of it I don't remember and then he knit until the cake ran out and then he started his next cake from the other end so that it would start with the same color that the last cake ended with and then he would just finish the shawl um, but if I did that it would run out at pink and it might be faded back out to white by the time I'm done with it and then it wouldn't look as much like watermelon so I had to be strategic and strike them together until a certain point and then I had to get rid of one of the strands and just finish with the other otherwise it wouldn't get all the way to pink so that's what I had to do and so the sock blank is Brucity Yarns Martini Yarn Blank the color was called Melantini um but yeah so really sad that Bruce City's out of business and it's sad that for the reason why she's out of business but you know not everything lasts forever so but yeah so that is my finished objects now we're going to move on to whips so I'm not going to talk about my main whip yet I'll get into that in just a second here this is my dotted ray speckle fade. I haven't worked on this in a long time. Uh, but um, it is a, there's two versions of it. There is the five skein fade, which I have already done. And then there is the four skein fade plus a chevron border, which has two solids striping with each other. And that's the version I'm doing, the version with the chevron border. Um, I don't know when I'm gonna get this finished. I already have a shirt that goes with it because generally I don't cast things on until I know what I'm gonna wear it with. So yeah, MCAL is an exception because um, yeah, I didn't pick, I didn't buy my shirt for my shawlography last year until partway through Clue One. I just happened to be at the mall and found the perfect shirt. This year I just happened to already have a shirt that goes with my yarns, but anyways. So I'm currently on color B, but I'm going to show you my yarns, um, see if I can actually find my color A. This is just a giant bag that I have two projects in. She's living in my watermelon project bag. And it's just a um, reusable bag that I got at Kohl's. I saw it, it had watermelons on it, so I'm like, okay, I'm not leaving without it. Um, so, you know. But this is my color A. This is from Blue Fiber Company. Um, Oh, actually, I have the labels here. This is from Blue Fiber Company. It's their sock yarn. And I got all the yarns at Stephen B for this. Well, the speckled yarns, I got my um, two solids at a different store. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, this is Blue Fiber Company sock. The color is called Fresh Rain. This is 85 Superwash Merino 15 nylon, 400 yards. Um, yeah, color's called Fresh Rain. Then my color B, which is what I'm currently knitting with, which all my yarns in here are tangled up, so bear with me as I work through this, but this is Hedgehog Fibers Sock in the color White Be Whimsical. Um, and that is actually a Stephen B exclusive colorway. Be whimsical. It is 90% soup wash merino, 10% nylon. We got hedgehog fiber sock. Be whimsical. So that's color B. Then color C. Um, here's my color C. Um, let me see if I can find the label for that. 
I had my labels all nicely paper clipped together and then somehow it all fell apart. So, yeah, now I'm just like digging for everything. Um, this is Beach Bum Yarn Santa Cruz Sock in the colorway Don Johnson Called. 75% um, superwash merino, 25% nylon, 463 yards. Um, and yeah um now this is the label it doesn't really show the beach bum logo i think this was a yarn that was exclusively done for stephen b but i'm not sure basically what it is is they had these sets of yarn where it was the santa cruz sock and then i forget the name of the other base but it's two skeins of yarn yeah, yarn fiber in my mouth sorry um but they had this um, like fuzzy, like textured yarn with it as well. I think it was in a different color, but what they are willing to do is if someone really just wants the sock yarn or really just wants the other yarn, they are willing to take it apart and separate it. And so the label that initially is with that is the pretty nice label that shows the name of the company and all the things. And so then once they separate them, then they obviously make a label for the other one. So they just, so Stephen B made this label. They happen to have this scan over in the fingering weight section. Um, because someone wanted the fuzzy skein that came with it and not this one. So they're like, okay, we'll just sell this skein to someone else then. So I bought it. Now, keep in mind, the yardage is 463. This is color C. Color C is really the only yarn you need to pay attention to your yardage. All of the other colors require 400 yards or less. Um, color C requires like 440 yards or whatever. So keep that in mind when you're purchasing your yarn. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, um, the only thing you gotta pay attention to is obviously if you have 50 gram skeins, you might need a second one, but um, yeah, so that is that. And then color D, I also got a Stephen B. This they had on clearance and it is tangled up in my other stuff. Hang on here, let me see if I can get this untangled. I might not be successful right now, but I will untangle it before I need to use it, of course. You guys, it's just a tangled mess. So, yeah, I got it. Um, now I'm just gonna wind this onto the ball here. All right. Now, grab the yarn label and I will show you what it is. My future episodes hopefully will be slightly more organized than this, but this is just my first episode. Um, this is man-made fiber everyday sock in the colorway Moody Blues. Here, Moody Blues. This is 390 yards, 80% merino, 20% nylon. Um, yeah, and here's the color. So yeah, that is my four skein fade for my daughter race speckle fade with the chevron border. So now the chevron border. Let me show you what I've got for that. Now my my four colors in the fade are um, yeah my four colors in the fade are. Um, of course, from Stephen B. And then my two colors that are going in my Chevron border, I purchased at Three Kittens Needle Arts in Mendota Heights, and then Stephen B's in Minneapolis. Um, but the reason I purchased them at a different store was because everyone at Stephen B was saying, knit your entire fade and then pick your colors for your edging. And if you know me, I like taking pictures of all of my yarn for a project all together in one photo and post it to Ravelry before I wind it into balls and cast on. So 
and I mostly do that unless I'm using scraps from something else and I can't necessarily, but. So that is a thing that I wanted to make sure I could do. So I went somewhere where they were willing to help me pick my colors. And it's not that they weren't willing, they were just suggesting that I be happier picking my colors once I see what the whole fade looks like knit up. But I wanted to pick my yarns right then and there, so I went to another store and picked them. Uh, but yeah, so this is going to be kind of not what you expect, but the lady at the store picked this and I thought it looked good. So this is West Yorkshire Spinner's Signature 4 Ply in the color Cherry Drop. So this is one of my Chevron border colors. And then my other Chevron border color makes more sense. This is Fonty BB Merinos in color number 877. Um, and they're 50 gram skeins, so I had to get two of them. Uh, hang on, I just got entangled up. Just once again, tangled, but yeah, I had to get two of them, so I'm just gonna untangle one of the two skeins of it because the other one's the exact same. And you don't need to see both of them to get the idea. I just barely need to go into the second one, so I'll have some leftovers. Um, but yeah. But here, this is the color that it is. So those are all my yarns for this project here. And I'm just on color B. So I've already finished using A. Oops, I'm actually showing you the wrong side here. Here's the right side. So yeah, that is my Daughter Gray's Speckle Fade with the Chevron border. Um, I don't know when that will get finished but it happened to be in the same bag as another whip that I wanted to show you. So I was like, well, what the heck, I'll just show this one as well. All right. So this is a whip that has a pretty big deadline. This is something I haven't worked on in a little bit, but I have a pretty big deadline. This is my mom's birthday present. Um, and her birthday is October 16th. I need to get it done before Thursday because I will be in full MCAL mode. Um, but here's the beginnings of it. Um, I just have this and one other whip that I want to get done by Thursday, but my other whip I'm in the process of binding off. It's a steeple wash doll, so the bind off takes forever. I'll get into it in a minute. But this is the Chickadee Cowl by Kristen Kapoor. Um, kind of hard to see the detailing because my yarn is marled. But this is a hand spun yarn that I bought at the Shepherd's Harvest Sheep and Wool Festival. That takes place every year at the Washington County Fairgrounds. Every Mother's Day weekend. And that is in Lake Elmo, Minnesota. Um... And this was one of the vendors in the barn. This is from Hopeville Hills Alpacas Farm. They had their alpacas with, and then they were selling some of their yarn. So here's the label from it. She doesn't know I'm making this for her, so good thing I'm filming when she's not home. Uh, but yeah, so it's just a half linen stitch. I just need to do it like, what was it, six inches? I don't know. It's a free pattern, so if I share any details with you guys, it's not a huge deal because it's a free pattern, but um, yeah, so I'm knitting it on the suggested needle size, which is 10 and a half. She, I think, used a commercial yarn and not a, well, it could have been a hand dyed yarn, but I'm using a hand spun yarn. And so this is all the natural color of the alpacas, so it's three different colors of alpaca. So I need to get that done in time for her birthday. So I need to get it done before MCAL starts more or less because I will be in full MCAL mode and won't work on this unless I get a clue done early, which last year I did not get my clue done early. In fact, I finished late. It's my own dumb fault for deciding to binge watch a TV show and 
if you even remotely know me, which you guys don't because it's my first episode, but when I'm watching TV and I have knitting with me, sometimes my hands stop moving because I'm so engrossed in what I'm watching. So, yeah. So that's what took Shawography super long to get done because I was binge watching a TV show. It's called Gimme a Break. It is an old 1980s sitcom and someone posted every single episode to YouTube. And that's the only way you can watch it. So I got into it. I was in the waiting room waiting for my brother to come out of an appointment once. I was sitting with my dad and um, that was on the TV there. And um, I really got into it. So I wanted to watch all the episodes. So yeah, I watched all six seasons, but that of course distracted me from Shawography. So yeah, this year I'm gonna try not to binge watch a TV show. Um, and if I do binge watch anything, it'll be knitting podcast because I do tend to actually knit during those. So, um, cause I'm behind on several people I follow. Now my main whip, which is living in my zebra project bag, which I bought this at the gift store at the Como Zoo, which is located here in the Twin Cities. Great place to go if you are visiting here, it's free. Um, and so, yeah. Um, yeah, this was like a $27 bag, but oh, it had to come on with me. If you know me, I'm obsessed with zebras. So, yeah. Um, and it had the nice zipper on top, you know. But this is my main whip, the one I'm currently binding off. So, at the beginning of September, when the MCAL requirements were launched, I, of course, was very in MCAL mode, and I'm like, I need to knit a past MCAL right now. I had just finished one, because Rockefeller is a past MCAL. That one, that's Rockefeller. Um, so, yeah, I was just in past MCAL mode. So, this is Color Craving, and it's very scrunched up on the needles, but... I'm starting to bind off, and if you're wondering, it's a Pico bind off, so it takes a really long time, because I-cord bind off's even faster because you're just binding off, right? Pico bind off, you cast on three, bind off six, cast on three, bind off six. So it's like you're taking six steps forward, but then you're backtracking three steps, right? So it, it, it takes longer to do, but it looks really good, and it's what the pattern called for. Pattern, he did say that you could alternatively do a um, I could bind off if you wanted to, but this is what he did, so that's what I'm doing. So hopefully I'll have this done in time. Uh, for MCAL, but otherwise I will finish the bind off right after MCAL, or if I have any downtime in between clues, assuming that my mom's cowl is finished. Because if not, then I'll work on that, but... Yeah, so I need to work on this bind off and I'll probably do that as soon as I'm done filming this. So, yeah, and so I have three yarns I'm using. I realized I didn't show you my yarns. Um, so here's color A, here's color B, and here's color C. Okay. Um, oh yeah, I do have my labels in here, okay. Perfect. Um, these are all three Stephen B. exclusive yarns. The bases aren't exclusive to them, but the colors are. And two of the yarns I got on Clarence. And then one of them, they still have. Color C is the one they still have. <coughs> Excuse me. So color A is the blue. This is Black Waddle Yarns Gravelia Fingering. It is 60% alpaca, 20% merino, 20% nylon. 387 yards. The color is called Spectator. It's a Stephen B. custom color, obviously. But yeah, Black Waddle. This is one of their regular bases that they do. Um, but they just did a custom color for Stephen B. Stephen had um, had a trip to Australia a couple years ago, and so I think he visited their farm when he was there, and so that is, I think, how that um, collab came into being. But yeah, I got that on Clarence. 
Then this I also got on clearance. This is my color B. Um, this is a yarn that three Irish girls did for Stephen B. This is their Glenhaven Cash Merino fingering. It's 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. Just a regular MCN base, really. The color is called Applejack. Um, and if you're wondering why this blue string's attached, it's just what was attaching the label to the skein. So, yeah. But that's the color. 370 yards. But yeah, it's called Applejack. Um, and yes, if you're wondering, I did have enough of these. I know the yardages aren't quite 400, but you need like 300 yards of color C and like, what was it, 340 of A and B, I don't remember. But yeah, so that's that. And then color C is also a Stephen B Custom yarn from Zen Yarn Garden. It's from his Binge Knit series. It is their super fine fingering 90 merino, 10 nylon, 400 yards. Um, the color is called Karaoke Mike. And yeah, this is one of Zen Yarn Garden's regular bases, just the Stephen Lee custom color of it. So, yeah. So that is Karaoke Mike from Zen Yarn Garden. And that one was not on clearance. I paid full price for it. So, So yeah, those are my three yarns for color craving. So I'm very happy that I'm on the bind off, get it done, and then I don't have to worry about that project anymore. So those are all my whips. I mean, I have a lot more whips than that, but I didn't have time to dig them all out. Plus they're not ones that I actively work on. Hmm. I suppose I should probably put the labels back in my bag. I think that'd be a good idea. Right. And then I will move on to acquisitions. Which, there are lots of acquisitions. So, brace yourselves. Dang it, where'd that paper clip go? There it is. Um, yeah, there's lots of acquisitions. Some of these acquisitions acquired or happened over the summer, but a lot of them were in the last couple months. Ugh. This is my bag of acquisitions I'm going to show you guys. And no, none of them are from Michael's. This is just the biggest bag I had. So that's all my acquisitions. So, and I will put pictures of all of the patterns I mentioned on the screen because I buy my yarns with specific projects in mind, usually. So, um, yeah. All right, excuse the rustling here. I'm just quickly gonna show this one, just because I only have, this is, one skein I have for a project that I haven't bought the rest for yet. It's a fade. I bought this for Chevron Shenanigans by Stephen West. <coughs> this is the Great Andronac Yarn Company. Um, the color is called Maple Leaf. It is their Silky Sock. It's 360 yards, 70% superwash merino, 20% silk, 10% nylon. Um, so Stephen B had, because you're probably wondering why I, this is caked up before I purchased the rest of my yarns and taking my photos. Stephen B had a bunch of yarns that they had for whatever reason caked up and they were just trying to get rid of them and they were selling them at a discount. Um, so they just had a bin full of caked up sock yarns and, well, they weren't all sock yarns, but a lot of them were. So I just thought this one was really pretty. I may have slightly been drawn to the peacock feathers on the label, who knows, but because I like peacocks as well. So, anyways, so that is going to be one of my colors in the fade for um, 
Chevron Shenanigans by Stephen West. Um, and I'm not showing these to you in any particular order. I'm just grabbing out of the bag what I grab out of the bag because I have a huge bag of stuff and then I will just have a big mess that I will just have to stuff back all in the bag again. Um, okay. This is a recent whip or whip acquisition, recent acquisition, and this is not a recent acquisition, but I bought this to go with this. I originally bought this skein for, I'll tell you what the yarn is in a second here, but I originally bought this skein for the painting honeycomb sweater, and I ordered it online, and I thought it was solid. Turns out it's actually variegated orange and yellow, so yeah, so I'm throwing it in a different project. This is Madeline Tosh Farm Twist in the colorway Mac and Cheese. I ordered this online from Imagine It in San Francisco, California. So, and Madeline Tosh does not make this color anymore, which is sad because it's really beautiful. Um, and if they still made it, that might have influenced what I made out of it because I might have still wanted another skein. But yeah, it was already discontinued when I bought it. They still make Farm Twist, but not the mac and cheese color. So I decided to pair it with, also Farm Twist, Carolina Reaper, which I, oops, sorry, almost dropped it. I ordered this um, directly from Madeline Tosh on their website. Um, yeah, those are going to go together and I'm going to do the Excuse Me Dickie by Stephen West. And the whole thing is two color brioche. So I think that's going to look really nice. So I wanted something that contrasted nicely. And I think that this is the answer. So then... starting to come undone. Uh, this is some yarn that I bought at Jimmy Beans. I ordered it online. This is La Vienne May Merino DK um, in the color Peanut Butter and Jelly. So Stephen just released a DK fade. It is the Pierre Pullover the sweater version of the Pierre shawl, which the Pierre shawl shows all solid in the fade. The sweater did have a couple speckly ones in the fade. And peanut butter and jelly is my favorite Libby Anime colorway. So, yeah, I don't know what the rest of my colors are gonna be yet, but you need two skeins of each of your colors. Um, and my other colors could end up being from other dyers, I don't know yet, but I'm going to a fiber festival in November. It is the Fall Fiber Fair in Hopkins, Minnesota. It's the first, excuse me, the first Saturday in November, so November 5th. And I might look for um, the rest of the yarns for that project when I'm there. I don't know yet. Um, but yeah. So that is one of my yarns for the Pierre Pullover by Stephen West. Because um, the project I was originally going to shop for there, um, let's just say Wall & Company got some exclusive Hatch Hog in one of their exclusive colors. And immediately I looked at it and went, yep, that's Spec 1 Pop. I'm not going to shop for it at the festival. I'm just going to get this. And that was the last time I didn't have yarn for it. So. So it's a great segue into my Spec 1 Pop yarn. I will take those out. Of course, they're at the bottom of the bag, so give me a second. the mini skein color pops that they just got in. 
um, because I subscribe to Will & Company's newsletter because I order from them all the time. Um, so, I got the Malabrigo Machida Moon Trio fade. And so this is Moon Trio new. This is Moon Trio full. Or no, this is Moon Trio Crescent. And then this is Moon Trio full. I like full. I would just make a whole project out of this color. It's really beautiful. But anyways. So this is the fade I have for Speckle and Pop. Now I gotta add the pop, right? So traditionally you would use solid color pops, right? Well, these are exclusively sold at Woolen Company from Hedgehog Fibers. <coughs> and they don't just have them on minis, they have them on like all the Hedgehog bases that they carry. I just happen to get them on soccer minis. It's mixed with black. It's really cool. So here's the pink. This is, and they only have five colors, which is fine because you need, you only need five pops. Otherwise, I would have had to pick and choose. But 90% merino wool, 10% nylon, um, 80 meters. This is called It's Not a Phase. That's the name of the color. It's Not a Phase. And that's black and pink. Then we move on to the orange one. This color is called Wham Bam. And the yellow is called Wasp. Then the green is called Lime White. And then the blue is High Voltage. So I got all of those the same day, same order, with the speckles one from Wool & Company to make Speckle & Pop by Stephen Lewis. Alright, we're almost through my acquisitions. Um, bear with me here. So this is a yarn I purchased at Flax and Fleece in Sauk City, Wisconsin a while ago. This is for the Spiraling Cables Triangle by Stephen West. This is Chappell Wool's Arbor Ball Stark 6. Color number 2204. Um, yeah, 2204 is the color number. Um, anyways, I needed to pick my main color. So then Hobby Lobby came out with the Authentic Hand Dye Vivid, and I immediately picked a color that I really liked, and I just never got around to buying it. They discontinued it. I needed three skeins of it. Someone had a lot of three in the color I wanted on eBay, so I ordered this from eBay. So this is Yarn Be Authentic Hand Dyed Vivid in the colorway Magenta. It is 100% Superwash Merino, 215 yards. So that is going to be the Spiraling Cables Triangle by Stephen West. And like I said, I have three skeins of it. So, yeah. Um... This is something that I've been wanting for a while, ever since it came out, and I finally found a project for it. This is the Premier Yarn Sweet Wolf Fruits in the colorway Watermelon, 100% acrylic, it's worse in weight. I'm annoyed. The project I have to do, I just need like 15 yards of the second one. Yeah. Then I'm going to make the Basic Beret by Jesse Rayet. Because I want a Watermelon Beret. You know, a Watermelon Beret would be pretty awesome. Anyways, here's what it looks like knit up. So, that's to give you an idea. It'll obviously look different if you crochet with it, but, but yeah, um, I'm really excited to knit that beret. I think it's going to look really cool. Go with my honeycomb shawl and yeah, um, I mean, I already have a watermelon bucket hat, so, you know.
And then I have this here. This is for Mosaic Musings by Stephen West. So this I ordered from Woolen Company and this I ordered from, or went in person and purchased at Hobby Lobby. This is the uh, Yarn Be Authentic Hand Dyed in the colorway Myriad Lights. So I have those. And then this is Malabrigo Sock in the color Black. So pairing those together because I think black will contrast nice with it, but they didn't have a black in this. And they also at Hobby Lobby carry Patton's Cry Socks, but they didn't have the black that it comes in. So I just ordered some Malabrigo Sock. Yeah. I literally like once I got in the car in the parking lot ordered it. <laughs> um, yeah, so those go together. This just arrived yesterday. This is Will Elf. I might be butchering the name of it. I don't know. It's a German yarn company. This is their Merino Pure Base, which is 100% superwash merino. And this is in the color avocado. I just recently bought an avocado shirt, so this is gonna go with it. I'm gonna knit the Ilex Shawl by Stephen West. Um, <clears throat> it's technically a three skein fade, but I'm going to instead use a gradient cake of yarn. And there's different yardage options. This yarn is dyed to order, so I happen to get the 1000 meter or 250 grams um, version because it was the one that had the correct yardage for my project without me having too much where I wouldn't get all the way up to use all the colors. But yeah, in the middle here, it looks like the pit of the avocado and then it like fades out. And on their website, on the listing for it, they have a picture of an avocado for you to compare it to. But anyways, yeah, that's for Ilex Shaw by Stephen West. And then I also recently purchased my yarn for Chrysler by Stephen West. Can you see I'm a Stephen West fan? <coughs> this is Pearl Talk You Soxy Thing. The color is called Mad About Saffron. So you might remember this yarn. It's the same base I'm using for my Mr. Nidwan Twists and Turns. Um, but 433 yards, 75% superwash merino, 15% nylon, 10% tensile. Um, yeah, mad about saffron. And then here's my other color, because Chrysler calls for two colors. This is Shakamayer Regia Baby Smiles, my first Regia. In the color, let's see. One zero, no, mm, let me start over. Zero one zero two four. Yeah, zero one zero two four. You can just look for yourself. I got both of these at Stephen B. I have seven skeins of this because it is 115 yards. So I have seven of them. And then I have two of these. But obviously I can't hold that all up at once because nine skeins of yarn, you know. Now, lastly, this is the last acquisition I have, and then I'll wrap this video up. A couple years ago, I knit the Yes Checks hat by Stephen West. And if you even remotely follow Stephen West, you will know that he just released the Basket Weaver shawl, which also calls for DK weight yarn. So, I'm, so I bought 10 skeins of the same yarn to make the basket weaver shawl. Um, this is Patton Silk Bamboo in the colorway Rouge. And um, that yarn just arrived today, I'll show you in a second. But basically, it. Patton Silk Bamboo is discontinued. It was discontinued a few years ago. 
and you know sometimes companies will just discontinue one color of a yarn and then still continue making the yarn that's what they did with rouge they discontinued that color and they were still making the rest of the colors and then they just decided to discontinue the yarn altogether so that means this color has been discontinued even longer and yeah i went through two skeins to make my hat because they're 102 yard skeins of a dk weight so so the shawl will require 10 skeins so it's like well shoot um but there's a yarn store it's called three red hens it is in saint thomas north dakota and they actually had 13 skeins in stock um and so i ordered 10 skeins so here's six of them and then here's the other four because um, they probably like come in packs of six and then they just took two skeins out of that pack so I wouldn't have 12 because I only wanted 10. But um, yeah, patent silk bamboo. And the color is called Rouge. And it is 70% viscose from bamboo and 30% silk. 102 yards, 93 meters. Um, 65 grams made in China and it's one of those yarns that comes wrapped around a cardboard tube so yeah but it was very nice to work with to make my hat so I'm looking forward to having a matching shawl because I don't really wear my hats unless I have matching shawls to go with them so I will finally be able to wear my hat yay now I do still have to buy a shirt to go with that outfit but yeah um and so I'm not going to open this pack up right now. I might open it up later so I can photograph it for Ravelry, but, you know, we'll see. But yeah, Three Red Hens in St. Thomas, North Dakota. I ordered it on their website. It's the first time I ever ordered from them. I'm really impressed with them. I ordered it right away at 9 o'clock on Thursday when the pattern came out. Because all I needed to wait on was the yards requirement so I would know how much to order. And um, then I could go ahead and order it. I ordered it at 9 a.m., emailed at 11 o'clock saying, we shipped your yarn out. I have never in my entire life ordered something and then two hours later it's been shipped. Impressive, amazing, and today's Saturday and the yarn is here. I'm impressed. Good job. If any of you guys from Three Red Hens is watching this, bravo. Your shipping department is amazing. So, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, that is all of my acquisitions, which are now scattered about on the floor, and I have to clean it all up now. Okay, I just realized that I had one more acquisition sitting here that I didn't show you. Whoops. So let me show you that quick and then I will be done. Um, this is purchased at Stephen B. This is Trendsetter Yarn Streamers. Color number six. Uh, 880 yards. Um, let me see here. 100% cotton. And I also purchased, um, no, let me find a skein where the labels really. Patton's Purple Heather, color number 2245. They had this, this is all discontinued vintage yarn, older than I am. Uh, yeah, and these are going, oh, this is 100% wool, fingering weight. I had to go on Ravelry and look up the yardage because it doesn't say, because it's back in the era of when labels didn't say yardage but those are going together I do have five skeins of this and I'm going to do painting squares by Stephen West so yeah so anyways um so yeah that's everything that I have for this episode so again I'm Andrew, thank you for checking in here at the Neon Knitter, and I will see you in the next video, which will probably be Mr. Knit Along related. 
And then um, you can look for another podcast episode um, probably the first week of November. Um, I may or may not delay that episode by a few days so that I can show you what I buy at the Fiber Festival. But technically those would be November acquisitions, so I might show you at the beginning of December. I haven't decided yet, or I could just do a separate video. I haven't decided yet, so we'll figure it out. But yeah, so thank you for checking in here, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.